We've got some news you can use with Dr. Lori, who's Discovery Channel's star appraiser. Uh, we, we left off on the Homer yeah. cell, and you had said in the, in the beginning of the show, always watch out for artwork because it's usually valuable. Right, animation cells are very, very important. And a couple things about animation cells. If they start to smell like vinegar, okay. literally like white vinegar, you know that you need to get that animation cell out of the hot attic, okay. right, and into a cooler place because they are basically combustible. They can just go, psh, okay? So we want to think Salt about it. the animation cells in that way. Okay. That's the first thing you want to think about. This is an animation cell, you know, middle part of the 1980s, and value on this cell is going to be somewhere around $350. Okay. The frame is worth another 35 bucks. Now, if you had a Disney animation cell from the 1930s, I'd be talking $15,000. Wow. Okay, so, so that's where we are when you have the comparison of a long established type of thing. And of course, and you know, the Simpsons is still important. Yeah. It just doesn't have the same kind of value because of the age. It's newer. Okay, so and still worth it to take care of and it. And still worth it to take care of it. But if you start to smell that vinegar smell, Dawn, all right. That thing has to get, get out, of the, out attic, of the attic, and it should be out of the attic anyway. Yeah. This piece is a typical piece that you're going to see, you know, the, the little the old, bread box. The old bread box. And it's got the vent holes in the back. It's enameled, and value on this piece is about $100. Oh, fun. And nice. It's in beautiful condition. Condition is king, remember. Okay. Condition is to antiques what location is to real estate. It's got to be <laughs> in good shape. Now, if you're thinking about other types of things, you know, Rosenthal porcelain, 22 karat gold banding, uh, hand applique decoration on that porcelain, valuable. Um, so that little set's probably somewhere around 300 bucks. Pieces of Wedgwood, that's called Jasperware, the blue and white Wedgwood pieces, those pieces are very valuable. This is where you start to get the brand names. Yeah. Tiffany, Wedgwood, Rosenthal, Kleenex, we love brand names. <laughs> you know? So we that's do. what you're thinking about. Those particular pieces are quite valuable too. The large plate of Wedgwood, the blue, white, very famous pieces that date back to the 1780s, that large piece is gonna come in around $95. The two smaller pieces are gonna come in around, probably around $40 each on the antique resale market. Jewelry, even costume jewelry can be valuable. Oh, okay. And what you have there is some costume, you have actual what's called nephrite or green jade, those uh, strands, you have some uh, real 14 karat yellow gold, and you also have some real pearls. So the real black pearls, which are in the case there, are going to be far significantly, so that's these. yeah, much more valuable than the other pieces, which are costume. But costume jewelry still has some value. So don't just arbitrarily throw away the Monet or the Sarah Coventry or the Weiss or the Trafari. Those pieces can be valuable too. But the pieces that are in the actual case, you're looking anywhere between uh, for the the, the small, uh, it looks like about a 16 inch that, strand one? right of the black okay, pearls this one? is going to come in probably around $900. Wow. And the white pearls or the cultured graduated pearls about $750. Wow. So, so very you want to think about some of those things. Remember jewelry, furniture, artwork, the okay. big three. Other things do have value. Don't just go arbitrarily getting rid of them. But when I'm in houses with families, the first thing they go is, how do we divvy up the furniture? How do right. we divvy up the jewelry? What do we do? Do we even know if Aunt Hildegard's portrait is valuable? <laughs> and usually it is. Okay. The furniture we have here on the set is actually um, furniture that is vintage. It's not antique. It's not 100 years old. It's less than 100 years old, which makes it vintage. They're about $150 a table. Okay. They are trying to look like 18, late 1800s tables, but they're made in the 1930s and 40s. You can tell that if you see the leather inset on the top of the table. Oh, okay. Leather or marble put in to at the top of a table is something that we see in the 1930s and 40s more so. Okay. So, so remember those kinds of things. And then there's stuff that's just fun. For example, what comes into our vernacular, what comes into um, our lives at a particular time. We're seeing new television shows that are based on old board games. Yes. So I brought you Clue. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Clue. Yes. But Clue um, is actually going to be part of a game now, a new television show that's coming on. And this is relatively interesting. What do you look for if you'll hold that? Remember this, you know, Miss Scarlet did it with the knife in the conservatory. Yes. Full parts. People will buy board games and not realize that they need actual all of the parts and pieces. So, you know, we killed whoever with the gun or the lead pipe or whatever it might be. The board games are very popular and these are the things that are usually in the attic. So we forget about these types of things because this is the kids stuff. The thing about kids, now you have kids. I yes. don't have kids. But they know the good stuff. Kids know the good stuff. <laughs> they are good collectors. They know what to collect. They know how to preserve it. Kids are smart and they don't always get good credit for that. 
So you want to think about those types of pieces. The Clue board game today is probably worth about 35 bucks. If this television show takes off and everyone's excited about who done it, then it could go up in value. It could go up in value. So we're starting to see where the revival of particular time periods are popular. You know, like the exotic revival, that little figurine from the 1960 is now worth $175. Oh, and I love this. Yeah. 10 right. years ago, it wasn't. We're going to take a quick break. Take. We're going to be right back with Dr. Lori. I love that. So we are back here live with Dr. Lori. And, you know, we have so many of your fans who are on the phone, and I apologize, <laughs> we're down to our final minute. But <laughs> we want to get to some of these. Uh, this was a fun piece that my kids would definitely pick up at an estate sale. Yeah. Actually, this I'm is hand it to you. Yeah, this is a Coca-Cola lighter. OK, so we're going to think about Coca-Cola, of course, very, very popular. A lot of people just collect Coca-Cola memorabilia. And lighters, you want to think about when we all got into the smoking craze. So you can think of the flappers back to the 1920s, which is about the era for this. And then you can think of maybe, you know, First Lady Jackie Kennedy, also smoking. So that idea of tobacco anna or memorabilia like this. The Zippo lighters are very popular. You probably have those around the house. And then a piece like this falls into two categories, tobacco anna, lighters, or also Coca-Cola collectibles. So it's worth about $125. Where another lighter, like a, a regular Zippo from this time period, that's only a lighter, that doesn't, isn't an advertising collectible, is only worth about $10. Okay. So you start to see the differences once you add an object into multiple categories within antiquing and collecting. So we want to think about those types of things. If you're faced with, I've got grandma's house, what do I do? You know, you've got to really say, I've got to get some expertise in here first. And then you have to also remember, there are objects, people come first, then we'll deal with the objects, get the good information so you can make intelligent decisions for all your family. Oh, Dr. Lori, thank you so much. It's so great to have you good here, to be as with always. You. Thank you. You can catch us or Dr. Lori on Facebook, and uh, we thank you for being here. See you tomorrow right here at 11 a.m.